Trigonometry the study of triangles and the relationships between their sides and angles. In this video we will look at how to find an unknown angle in a non right angled triangle using the cosine rule. Ok, so let's do a question. Question 1. Find the measure of the angle A correct to one decimal place. So look at our checklist. Is it a right angled triangle where I use sine, cosine, tan or Pythagoras? Well, there's no right angle there, so it's not one of those. So it's a non-right angle triangle. Now, can I use the sine rule? Do I have two pairs of opposites? And I don't have two pairs of opposites. So maybe can I use the cosine rule? So do I have two sides and an included angle? Well, you can see there, I do have two sides and an included angle, but I don't know the included angle. So this brings me to my last option on this checklist, which is, could I use the cosine rule through having all three sides to find the missing angle? And if you look here, we have the side of length 12, we have the side of length 13, and we have the side of length 10 that is opposite the included angle that I'm looking for. So you can see here we have the setup that we need for the cosine rule. We've got our two sides in blue here. Okay, we have our included angle in orange and we have the side opposite the included angle in orange. So we have the setup for the cosine rule. The only difference is this time that we know the side opposite the included angle. It's the included angle that we're looking for this time. So let's get the cosine rule then from the log tables. So we have our two sides and the side opposite, which lets us find the included angle. Okay. So let's use the cosine rule then to build our solution. So what we have here, remember, is that A is the side opposite the included angle. B and C are the two sides either side of the included angle. And A is the included angle that we don't know this time. So let's sub in our values. So starting off, A is the side opposite the included angle, which is 10 here. So 10 squared equals... 12 squared plus 13 squared minus 2 times 12 times 13 times the cosine of A, the angle that we don't know. Okay, so our first job here is to simplify what we have. So we have 10 squared is 100, 12 squared is 144, 13 squared is 169, and then we have minus 2 multiplied by 12 multiplied by 13 is minus 312 times cosine a. So just be careful of that sign there. Also then what we're going to simplify is we're going to add these two numbers together. So what we're left with now is our equation that's as tidy as we can make it. So now we're going to solve for a. Now you can see here my equation is quite complicated. On the right hand side, it's very complicated what is actually happening to the angle A that we're looking for. So what we're going to do is we're going to build up the angle A looking at what is happening to it on the right hand side there. And once we observe that, that will give us a good guideline as to how to work backwards and reverse to get the angle A. So looking at the angle A, the first thing is we have the cosine of A. Then the next thing that happens is the cosine of A is multiplied by negative 312. And then the last thing to happen is 313 is added on. So looking at that, that's going to help us learn how to reverse back to find A. So the first thing we're going to do is the last thing that happens. So the last thing that happens is 313 is added on. So that's the first thing that we will cancel. So we cancel 313 by subtracting 313 and then we will be cancelling the negative 312 that's multiplied by cosine A. By doing the reverse we will divide by negative 312 and then finally we have the cosine of A so we will reverse cosine by taking the cosine inverse. And that will bring us all the way back to A, the angle that we are looking for. So now we just have to apply these steps to our balancing method for solving this equation.
So first of all, we're going to subtract 313 from both sides. So that will cancel my 313. And on the left, I have 100 take away 313. OK, at this point, just simplify. So we'll do the 100 take away the 313. OK, now we have our simplified equation. We can take it a step further. So the cosine of 8 is multiplied by negative 312. So to reverse multiplying, we divide. So divide both sides by negative 312. So that will be cancelled on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, we will have to divide my negative 213 by negative 312. So we'll form this ratio on the left. And on the right, I have the cosine of A. Now, at this point, you can simplify if you like. Minus and a minus makes a plus. And if you're not comfortable with this fraction, you could turn it into a decimal if you like. Now, we're not finished yet because we have the cosine of A, but what we really need is A. So we have to reverse the cosine function here. So to do that, we use cosine inverse. So taking cosine inverse on both sides, that will cancel off the cosine, leaving just the angle A that I'm looking for. And on the left-hand side, we take the cosine inverse of my ratio. OK, so now we have our angle A. We have an expression to find our angle A. So we'll just use the calculator to simplify this. So now I get the cosine inverse, so that's shift, cosine. Use our fraction button. We have negative 213 on the top, down arrow to my denominator, and I have negative 312. Arrow out of your fraction and close brackets. And as I said, two minuses make a plus, so we could put that in as a positive fraction either. Equals, so my answer, the angle is 46.9456. My question asked for one decimal place for the answer, so we will take 0.9 and the 4 is not greater than 5, so we will round down. So my answer is 46.9 degrees is the measure of the angle A. Now, so example number 2, find the measure of the angle or QP correct to one decimal place. OK, so first of all, what is the angle or QP? So it's always the one that's at the vertex in the middle. So it's the angle at Q, the one that goes from or to Q to P. So the one at Q. Now, another way of labeling the angle at the vertex Q is to call it the angle Q. So that's what we're going to do for ease. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do is check our checklist. So is this a right angle triangle? No, it's not. Is it a non-right angle triangle? Yes, it is. So do we have two pairs of opposites for the sine rule? No, we don't. Do we have two sides and the included angle for the cosine rule? Well, we have two sides and the included angle, but we don't know the angle. So the last option is, do we have all three sides for using the cosine rule? And we do. So you can see here that we've got side of length 11, side of length 15, and side of length 12, which is opposite the included angle that I am looking for. So again, essentially, we have the structure we need for the cosine rule. So let's get the cosine rule from our log tables. So we have our two sides and the side opposite this time, which lets us find the included angle. OK? So we're going to use the cosine rule now to build our solution. So remember, A is the side opposite the included angle. B and C are the two sides either side of the included angle, and A is the included angle that we don't know this time. So let's sub in our values. So here we can see that this side opposite the included angle is 12 this time. So subbing in our 12. And then subbing in our two sides, we have 11 squared plus 15 squared minus 2 times 11 times 15 times the cosine of, and this time our angle is called Q. So our first job is to simplify. 
So 12 squared is 144, 11 squared is 121, 15 squared is 225, and minus 2 times 11 times 15 is minus 330 times the cosine of Q. And then take these two numbers here and add them together. So we're left with 144 equals 346 minus 330 times cosine Q. So now we need to solve for Q. Okay, so the right-hand side of this equation is very complicated. So we are going to look at how Q is being built up. So we have the cosine of Q, which is then multiplied by negative 330, and then 346 is added on. So how we're going to reverse this with our balancing method is, first of all, we'll cancel the 346 by subtracting 346. Then we'll cancel the minus 330 that's multiplied by cosine of Q by dividing by minus 330. And then we will reverse cosine by using cosine inverse back to the angle Q that we are looking for. So first of all, then, we are going to subtract 346 from both sides to cancel our positive 346. So the right-hand side, the 346 is cancelled, and on the left-hand side, we have 144, subtract the 346. So just simplify there on the left-hand side with your calculator, and we have minus 202 or negative 202 on the left equals negative 330 multiplied by cosine Q on the right. Okay, so at this point then, my cosine Q is multiplied by negative 330. So to reverse that, we're going to divide both sides by negative 330. So negative 330 is cancelled on the right, and on the left then we have negative 202 will have to be divided by negative 330. Okay, as I said to you, at this point you can simplify, two minuses make a plus, and you can simplify to a decimal if you feel like it. Okay, now we're nearly finished. We have cosine Q, but we're actually looking for just Q. So let's reverse cosine by using cosine inverse on both sides. So that will cancel off my cosine, leaving what I want on the right, which is just the angle Q. And on the left, we will have to take the cosine inverse of the ratio, negative 202 divided by negative 330. So that will go straight into your calculator. Okay, so then I have cosine inverse, which is shift, cosine, use your fraction button. In the numerator, I have minus 202, or negative 202. Down arrow to your denominator, and we have negative 330. Use your arrow to come out of your fraction, close your brackets, equals. So we have 52.2569. Look to your question, we have to leave the answer correct to one decimal place. So after my point 0.2 I have a 5, so I will round up to 52.3. Okay, and then I just like to leave the answer the way the question has been asked. So we were asked for the measure of angle or QP, and that's how I'm leaving my answer. Okay.